Alright guys, welcome back to Urge. We are moving on in the subclass series with the second new subclass that was brought through the Runeterra D&D crossover Surprise! event extravaganza, <laughs> uh, which is a fighter subclass, the yeah. Renegade Fighter. Definitely <sighs> the stick song. Just, I, I, I had to really resist start singing the <laughs> stick song there. Woo! Yeah, well, there you go. Uh, so if you're new to the channel, which is subclass series, what we're going to do is we're going to go through all the subclass abilities. Uh, gained in the subclass, and we're going to rate the roleplay value, the combat value, and the overall class synergy based on how the abilities gained in this subclass are going to improve on the base class abilities. So, without any further ado, we're going to jump straight into this. Let's go. Level 3, we gain Scoundrel's Wit. Ah. You gain proficiency with two of the following skills between Deception, Persuasion, and Sleight of Hand. Usually rogue-based skills. Definitely. Makes, makes sense. With the Renegade. Renegade. At level 3 as well, you gain your gunfighter form. You begin constructing a custom firearm that suits your unique brand of renegade style. The process begins by selecting a form upon which you base your weapon. Choose one of the following options. Each form grants you new abilities and unlocks certain upgrades you can add to your weapon at higher levels. The first choice is the Pistolier. Favoring speed and style over raw power, uh, this small flintlock handgun lets you take an action on your turn to target a creature within 30 feet and shoot. You get to make a ranged attack roll against the target. You are proficient with the attack, and on hit, the attack deals piercing damage with the 1d6 plus your dexterity modifier. The number of shots you can fire during a single action increases when you reach higher levels. Two shots at level 5, three shots at level 11, and four shots at level 20. The shots can target the same creature or different creatures, make a separate attack roll for each shot. So essentially what's happening here is they're letting you use your extra attack that you would get as a fighter yep. for your unique subclass gained weapon. But you're gaining a weapon through the subclass mm -hmm. in a similar fashion to how like a Hexblade Warlock would gain mm -hmm. their weapon through their subclass. Correct. Your other option is the Sniper. Armed with a large two-handed firearm, Renegade who adopts a Sniper form can inflict massive damage with a single shot. As an action on your turn, you can target a creature within 120 feet and shoot. As an action, you make a s attack roll against the target. You're proficient with the attack, and on hit, tra target deals piercing damage equal to 1d10 plus your dexterity modifier. Yep. Do you deal extra damage using this form when you reach higher levels, dealing damage equal to 2d10 plus your dex mod at 5th level, 4d10 mm. at 11, and 6d10 at 20. Yeah, he said it. So, you get to make up to four quick shots with your pistolier, or up to one big shot with your sniper, but there is Wait, more there's to it. more. So, weapon of choice, uh, essentially when you choose the archetype at third level, you get to pick one minor upgrade and one major upgrade from the firearms upgrades listed below. And the, if, obviously if it has a prerequisite, you have to choose that, a lot like the uh, Eldritch Invocations do for Warlocks. And you also get additional minor upgrade at five and additional major upgrade at level 10. So, as a speed run through <laughs> all ten of these abilities, six minor and the four major ones, uh, Blade and Black Powder um, lets you do, basically do a, a melee attack with your gun, slashing damage, and it does not impose disadvantage. Normally, if you try to attack with a ranged weapon in melee range, it's disadvantaged, so it lets you be able to mix it up and be in combat without having to worry about right. that disability. Uh, Caliber Net gives you a chance to force a strength saving throw or strain the target uh, once per rest. That's for either gun. Collateral damage is specifically for a sniper. Basically, when the your bullet strikes, it does explosive damage. 1d6 piercing damage. It's pretty useless. Next save, yeah. Within yeah. five feet. So. Yeah, it's pretty useless. Let's skip that one. <laughs> we get to the, get the two fun ones. Uh, crosshairs, level five. If you have not moved, you can aim, your, uh, aim down your sights as your bonus action, reducing your speed to zero. But... Granting you advantage on Oof. all attacks you make using your gunfighter's form feature until the end of your turn. Seems good. Oh boy. And then double barrel requires sniper form. You add a second barrel to your firearm. When you use your gunfighter form, you can shoot twice during a single action instead of once. Shots can target the same or different creatures making a separate attack roll for each. I read those in detail for a reason because they're the two best options. Okay. <laughs> that, again, did I say that out loud? Smoke screen as the other minor you have. This is also a, a fair option if you want this kind of play style. Uh, ten foot cube center on a point. Areas covered by a cube of smoke, heavily obscured. Smoke lasts for ten minutes and cannot be dispersed. And so it's a you know free distraction, get out of jail. You know you know CC chase. You know more of an RP ability, uh, but that definitely has its uses. Yes. 
Then the four major upgrades, you have Barrage uh, to Dexterity Saving Throw or 15-foot Cone for 10, 3d10 piercing damage plus your Dex mod. That's a once-per-rest feature. Uh, double Up uh, basically lets your bullet ricochet to a second target. Uh, you can redirect that bullet a number of times equal to your Charisma Modifier per rest. And it's just your uh, Dex mod that does this damage. Right, yeah, sorry, yeah. It's uh, it's not like the, the 6d10 ricochet yeah, twice. The whole thing. <laughs> yeah, it's just your, yeah, equal to your Dex modifier. It's kind of lackluster, to be honest. Uh, lightning round, uh, each creature in a one foot wide line, 30 feet long. Dexterity saving throw will take 3d8 lightning damage once per rest. It's kind of like two different breath weapons almost. You get a lightning at, you know, 30, 30 foot line right. or a 15 foot cone. For similar damage and then trial by fire which is by far the most interesting of these uh, charge your weapon with blazing force start your next turn whenever you make a successful attack each of your attacks deal extra fire damage equal to half your fighter level rounded up you can charge your weapon number of times equal to your charisma modifier again regain all uses after a short or long rest so all the abilities to pick from there's six total minor again four major we'll put all these up on the screen so you can read through yes. more in detail try to hit them at least the gist of them as quick as possible uh, but again, with these, interesting that uh, the ones that require uses are based on your charisma, uh, which normally a fighter would not be dipping into with any significance unless they truly wanted to play that RP side of their character. At level 7, we have a cunning shot. You uh, basically deal damage with your firearm. It ignores resistances and immunities. So basically, this is going to help you uh, not have to worry about getting a magical weapon. Right. Just because... Uh, you know the the weapon gain in the, is part of the subclass. Right. So this is just getting letting it basically get the magical properties essentially because right. a lot of creatures get to the point where they're right. you know, immune or resistant to. If you do your, your trial by fire does fire damage if they happen to resist fire damage right. it will ignore that as well as part of your ability. Yes. So level ten we have Grin and Barrett. You can brace yourself in the heat of battle. When you use your second wind feature you gain plus one bonus to your AC and your movement speed increases by ten feet until the start of your next turn. So just a nice little way to buff up your second wind ability, get you a little bit more survivability out there on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. uh, right gun for the job at level 15. Your skill with a firearm can adapt to any situation. When you finish a long rest, you can replace any of your firearm upgrades with a different one. Though you cannot have more than two major upgrades equipped at a time, you must still meet the prerequisite of an upgrade in order to benefit from it. So this lets you just change your guns around mm -hmm. uh, every day, depending on the situation or whatever might be coming up during that day. Right. Gets it you uh, just get some more options and more readily available for each situation. And your final ability is light them up at level 18. As a bonus action, you can either throw or set down a small explosive. If thrown, the explosive has a range of 30 feet and detonates immediately on impact. The explosive can be detonated remotely if placed from up to 60 feet away as another bonus action. So you can set it on your turn, you know, move away, hide or whatever, and then boop, on the next turn, blow yep. it up. Uh, it is a 15-foot radius. Uh, dexterity saving throw to take 12d6 force damage on a failure or half as much on a successful throw. Uh, and the DC for this is equal to your firearm upgrade DC. And this is a once per short or long rest ability. So it's 12d6 once per rest, which is a... Not a bad amount of damage yes. for to get once per uh, once per rest of either type. Yeah, especially when it's considered force damage, which is most likely not going to be resisted. Correct. So definitely very interesting. But with that, that is going to be all of the abilities and options that you gain from this subclass. So we'll move straight on into the rating section of the video. Uh, first up, we have the roleplay value, and again, asterisks as always. Uh, <laughs> when we talk about the roleplay value, we're talking about interacting with the world, interacting with NPCs. Uh, Non-combat encounters, avoiding combat, things like that. We're already anticipating you going to be acting out your fantasy, lore, history, background, all those great things, acting out your abilities and everything. Uh, so what we're only looking at here for the score is the abilities gained in the subclass. So we're looking at the mechanics of how these abilities are going to help you in non-combat scenarios, non-initiative rolling encounters, essentially. Right. So that being said, there's not a whole lot going on here that is non-combat related. Yes, you're going to gain some... Uh, proficiencies with some skills, yep. which is always great. You're going to gain uh, some minor upgrade options, such as your net or your uh, smoke screen, which are going to give you some potentially RP options. But other than that, most everything is focused on the combat side of things. Mm -hmm. So we went with just a 2 out of 5 on here, just because mm -hmm. this class is very much more focused on the combat side of things. With the combat side of things, and again, if it's not focused on one side, guys, guess what? It's focused on the other 9 times out of 10, and here we are. Um, you get two different forms to pick from, which I think is interesting. Uh, I like versatility, as you guys who watch this regularly would know. 
But sometimes with the, the the loss of versatility, you do lose some lethality. Look at me with my my, my league terms. Get in there. Ha! My animal. Uh, Pistolier, getting to shoot multiple times, you know, you allow if you can pick the uh, the choice for blade blade and black powder to be in kind of in melee, kind of be like this right. mixed range melee mid range. You know, uh, interesting spot because that's that's something that's a really a, a space that doesn't happen a lot in D and D. Usually, you're in it or you're way the far out of there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so that that would you allow you to play that occupy a space that probably isn't used as much. Of course, the big stick. If you really want to just delete single targets, mercy heavens, picking this <laughs> picking the sniper choice. Like I th- I think as far as far as flavor goes, the pistolier is more interesting for the reasons I've already said. But as raw damage output goes, being by level eleven, just to be able to pop four d ten per turn with a shot is great. But yes, it's only one attack per turn. But look, let me give you some free help with that. <laughs> by taking that level five, you get crosshairs where you can just choose to not move and get advantage on your attack. You sacrificed your bonus action as a fighter. You don't have a lot of uses for your bonus action anyway. Second win's about it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and be. being a fighter, you have this thing called action surge. So you could fire two shots, action surge, fire two more. Hey guys, <laughs> for um, for those for, all- the, for the math people here, that's sixteen d ten damage in a turn, assuming you don't crit. Yeah, if you're taking the upgrades, let you shoot twice with the sniper. Because are you not going to do that? Right. Also, there's something called sharpshooter. There's also a thing called sharpshooter, which we you discussed get, before. So you get you, advantage with your yeah. attacks, and then you get sharpshooter. Yeah. And then you're dealing 40-10, or if you, if you make it to level 20, which is great for you if you're doing 60-10 with advantage. But like, there are some, besides just the raw damage output from sniper the sniper build there, Calibernet will let you restrain things. Right. Uh, you know, If you wanted to, somebody try to run away from you can try to shoot them down there. Um, I Probably my biggest thing that holds me back here from giving us a higher score than what we have is to me the major fire upgrades really just aren't that good. Which you're going to have to dip into charisma right. because of it's what your firearm upgrade DC is based around. Right. Trial by fire is probably the best option for sniper, but it's much better even for uh, pistolier because yeah. you're getting more shots, uh, right. to, therefore getting you know more of that fire damage uh, in burst rounds. Um, so we went with a four and a half. A four? Did we say four, four. on this? I don't forgot. Yeah, I don't know. The more we talk about it, the more I think. I wonder. About I think it. we went with a four. We're gonna go. We're gonna say four. Once you hit level eleven, is when he starts like I think pumping up. Right. It's kind of like damage. um, the artillerist artificer. Once you once you're able to get yeah, that you, second you gun up that, there, that certain... you start getting a little silly with the amount of damage you can put out. This becomes the same thing. Once you hit that eleven, it's a huge jump from two d right. ten to four d ten damage with each shot. You're doubling the amount of damage outputs you could do per turn, which is a little fun. Uh, the other abilities are a little more on the lackluster side of things. Um, right. I mean, cutting shot is very important. Because if you don't have that right. late game, it's going to destroy the amount of damage you could do. Right. Uh, Grin and Barrett just giving you an extra DC, extra 10 movement feet is fine. Right gun for the job is helpful because it does let you switch from day to day. But all three of those abilities are probably not going to be ones you're just like super excited to, to be to make use of. Yeah, I think that's what's really holding it back is the other abilities. I mean, your your weapon itself with the whole class is built on is pretty strong. Yeah. But the thing that brings it down to a four, I think it's what we're, we're talking about, is yeah. what actually brings it down to a four is these other abilities in the side. There's class. not much else. Like you yeah, are you are your, really like, good at doing that gun thing very well. That's yeah, pretty much you it. shoot you shoot a lot. You do what fighters do. You shoot a lot. Uh, lastly, we have the overall class synergy. I mean, we, again, we kind of did this with this uh, subclass as well. It's kind of overlapped a little bit. I feel like uh, with the charisma, yeah. it definitely has some issues. Some of the abilities, yeah, I mean. You get your uh, second wind bonus where you get your bonus AC and movement yep. speed, which is it's, it's fine. Second wind is a great ability. Um, and some of the options you get with your uh, upgrades are pretty solid. But again, being centered around charisma makes it a little bit awkward uh, just because it kind of makes you rethink your whole character build from the beginning. Yeah. Um, trying to dip some into charisma without making it completely useless. Because <laughs> if you get some of these abilities and you're going to use them once, it yeah. makes it definitely a lot worse. So you probably want to have 14, 16 in your charisma it's definitely going to change how you build your character sure uh, so with that we went with a 3 out of 5 for the synergy just because mm-hmm. um, there's a little bit of wonkiness on there uh, with the charisma but overall it's pretty solid and does synergize with some of your other abilities right. and of course cunning shot giving immunity or uh, overcoming resistances and immunities is yeah. huge because otherwise it, it kind of uh, ruins your uh, <laughs> subclass yeah. eventually because yeah. most things become you know immune to non-magic damage well this basically just gets around that very fun interesting 
uh, subclass been mm-hmm. based around the gunslinger, which I know a lot of people are very interested in having sure. a you know the steampunk kind of muskets and stuff right. in the D and D setting. You guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. Mm-hmm. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell notification so our new videos are coming out. And uh, guys. Let us know if you've played with a fighter or as a fighter. I was to hear stories down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, all people who watch these videos, you don't su- push the button. Yeah, it doesn't hurt. It's not going to hurt you or anything. Mm-hmm. It helps us out. It does. And you'll know when all of our new stuff comes out so you don't miss out on any of our great stuff. Because if you're right. watching our videos already at the end of like this one, you made it this far. I mean, right. It means you're watching our videos. Right. So yeah. you're about to subscribe, right? <laughs> like you're here at this point. <laughs> push the button. Guys, always appreciate all the support. Of course. Uh, thank you guys all so much for helping us grow so yeah. quickly. And hopefully there's a lot more coming from us soon. So stay tuned to the channel. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.